With so many people joining Mango Lossy recently, we thought it'd be a good time to put together kind of a historical look on exactly why Mango Lossy came to be and why the name is changing, and this is a little bit of a soft announcement here, to the republicofit.com, or the republicofit.com. So the history of Mango Lassi goes back to 2014, and it's important to understand some context here. In early 2014, say about January, Spiceworks was a really big, uh, vibrant community. They were growing, they were getting a lot of traction, um, and they were looking for round C funding. In February of 2014, Goldman Sachs stepped in with, I believe, about $59 million for uh, Spiceworks to help grow the community and, and look at uh, new business opportunities and such as, as venture rounds of funding tend to do. Uh, within a couple weeks of um, Goldman Sachs becoming involved in Spiceworks, and we don't know absolutely for sure that there's a direct tie between the two, but reasonably we know that Goldman Sachs was heavily involved with changing a lot of direction at Spiceworks. At that time, uh, in uh, very, very late February, so about three weeks after the acquisition, um, a number of high-profile MSPs within the Spiceworks community were given an insider tip that we were about to be asked to leave the community because MSPs were about to become considered vendors uh, and going to be charged uh, for staying in the community. The price at the time that was quoted to us was $15,000 per year for up to five MSP members. For someone like NTG, where I work, this is a major problem because we had 40 of the top contributors in, in the Spiceworks community. So even if we were to pay the $15,000 cost, which there was no way to recoup as MSPs were not making any money from the community, um, we would still have 35 top contributors kicked out of the community on that alone. So this is going to be a huge problem, even if, if companies could justify funding uh, uh, that uh, to stay in the community as green guys, uh, it, didn't, it didn't make any sense because the largest uh, vendors knew that MSPs weren't making money from the community in that way. So it didn't actually make sense to pay it, even if it was possible to do so. The problem with this is that in IT, nearly everyone's an MSP. Whether you're an internal MSP working for multiple departments, which normally we overlook, or you're an external MSP just in the traditional sense, or you're a vendor who does technical work that kind of seems like an MSP, or you're NTG where you're an ITSP, but basically an MSP, uh, or you're uh, simply working full-time for somewhere and sidelining for another business. You're an MSP. So almost everyone, that's probably stretching the point, but easily over 50% of all people who work in the SMB space are classified as an MSP at least part of the time. So a lot of people who do a little bit of side work suddenly would be caught in this sweep if everyone was... Um, uh, being held to the same standard. And if they're not, then it was an incredibly difficult standard that no one could figure out. The bottom line was MSP, the big MSPs got enough warning that they could discuss what they were going to do when they were about to be picked, kicked out in a week or two. So that happened roughly on a Wednesday at the end of February 2014. Uh, a meeting was called between a number of vendors and MSPs and a few interested third parties who had been pushing for uh, alternatives for some time, and a conference call was done, and everyone discussed, you know, MSPs got together and said, how big is the market? And the largest MSPs got together, pooled their numbers, and said, there's not even close to $15,000 of business from the entire uh, Spiceworks ecosystem, let alone enough per MSP. So it was a universal decision that they're just, MSPs were not making money from the community. Everyone got a little bit, a couple hundred dollars of business here and there. Uh, but by and large, because the community was all IT people, they weren't people looking for MSPs. They're looking for server vendors and storage vendors and hyperconvergence and software, but they're not looking for other MSPs. Plus, the community was lots of free advice, which is why we were all there. So it wasn't like anyone was expecting there to be an MSP market, and the reason that MSPs were always considered just normal IT professionals in the community is because they are. They're the ones buying from the vendors, not the ones selling uh, in these cases. So it made sense that there wasn't any money in the community for that. However, the MSPs and a lot of uh, IT professionals saw great value in the open conversation. If MSPs were removed from that, simply the, the quality of the conversation would decrease for those who stayed, and obviously for the MSPs, it would simply go away. So the decision during this call was that it was necessary to come up with an alternative. No one felt that abandoning online peer review and professional uh, uh, groupings was a good idea, so we had to find a way that we could continue to do this without being allowed in Spiceworks. Uh, the answer was we couldn't find another community that allowed for this. Uh, server fault 
was uh, pre-existing, predates Spiceworks, but it's a very different thing, right? It's not a community. It's a question and answer site, and they're great for what they do, but they didn't meet a need. Reddit is just a train wreck, so that's not an option, right? It's not a good community for conversations. It's not a good place to get to know people. Uh, it's not friendly. It's not professional, right? It's not meant to be. It's an open forum for just everybody. Uh, and so the, the decision was that a new community was needed because there was a gap in the market that Spiceworks had been filling, but it de decided was they were not going to be filling in the future as they change directions uh, towards, we don't know, right, right? Were they trying to monetize? That's the assumption that Goldman Sachs felt there were a lot of MSPs who would pay and so decided to try to monetize on them and then found out that that didn't exist because not a single MSP joined. Um, uh, did they think that MSPs were somehow competing with the vendors and causing problems and just wanted them to go away? We don't know. We don't know what logic there was behind it. But what we do know is that uh, there was not going to be a way forward for the MSPs. So the idea of creating a new community was proposed on a Friday night. We didn't know if we had days or weeks before we were going to be kicked out. The final date had not been set yet. Uh, so this was a very much a panic. We didn't know if we were going to find out on Monday morning that our accounts were gone and that we couldn't stay in the community at all, even to tell each other that we had been been asked to leave. So uh, very, very quickly, uh, the decision was made not to allow any vendors to be involved in the sponsorship uh, of the actual platform for the new community because that was something we wanted to fix some things or change some things uh, as we retuned from what we had seen in the past, right? It's not that any platform we had seen anywhere was perfect, uh, but some had been so good that we would never consider going somewhere else. Uh, but given a chance to start over, a lot of decisions were made such as that all participation would be free and open for forever, whether you're an IT pro, uh, a vendor person, an MSP, whatever, because really we're all just professionals with different aspects of the field, right? It, it's not like if you were doing a forum for engineers or architects that you'd be like, well, you're an architect working for this kind of firm. We don't, we don't let you in. They have just as much good input as anyone else, right? You need all these different aspects to have full conversations. Otherwise, you're cherry, pick, cherry picking from certain aspects of the field and you're going to get skewed results, right? If you only allow vendors to participate, you're always going to get a certain view of commercialization. If you only allow IT uh, professionals to discuss things, then you're going to get something skewed much more towards open source, for example. You have to allow everyone to get a balance so that one side can argue for their needs and value and one and another can argue for theirs and, and share ideas and collaborate, right? You need everybody. As soon as anyone's cut out, the value of the conversation dramatically drops, right? So, uh, making an open forum where everybody was free to communicate and and uh, share ideas uh, and it, it there's no pay to play and all that that was a key tenet um, and wanting to have a platform that was extremely fast and low cost to maintain were important uh, but if any vendor was actually sponsoring the platform and we did have multiple vendors who stepped in and said they would pay for everything if we wanted to have a paid for community um, it was decided that it was best if some of the IT pros or some third party uh, that was not an IT company uh, was involved to do that. Uh, so at that time, a new company was formed that had no IT professional working in it called Grove Social. Uh, and the idea was that that would be a uh, marketing business that did social media marketing and they would own and control the community. Uh, but they did not have any technical resources. I volunteered to do the actual building of the, the community itself. No pay. Uh, doesn't take that much work. It was one busy weekend. Um, we spent the weekend doing a lot of uh, technical research, right? We looked into all the different platforms we could find, um, tested some out, and eventually over a period of two days, settled on NodeBB, felt that it had the technology uh, and the momentum um, and the code and the future that we really felt would be good for building a community. Uh, and so built on that. And by Monday morning, we had gone live. So this is Friday night. We had the call of what do we do? We're going to lose our access to Spiceworks. And by Monday morning, uh, we were live on the community and posting and, and had users coming in. Lots of MSPs, obviously, who felt that they had nowhere else to go. Uh, by Wednesday, um, we had started getting contact from Spiceworks that it was very, very noticeable that things had um, happened. And within about a week, Spiceworks contacted us and said they were going to back down on the MSP kickout because obviously there was a huge amount of traffic and concern about this and that and that the MSPs were going had already left uh, the community at that point. Um, and so many went back. Um, some did not. Many went to both and stayed like NTG did. We participated just as heavily in Spiceworks before and after that point uh, for a number of years uh, because we still felt that that was a valuable community, um, but 
uh, we, we felt that there was no way to abandon uh, Mango Lassi because it was only by Mango Lassi remaining viable that Spiceworks had agreed to allow the MSPs in Spiceworks. So all the MSPs who have used Spiceworks since uh, March 4th, 2014 have done so because Mango Lassi made that possible. Um, there was other communities that broke off at the same time or about the same time within a few days of Mango Lassi and one of the uh, one group of people uh, from that original call um, who had helped make the decisions about Mango Lassi felt that they were really hoping that a nonprofit would be an option um, and went down a path with another uh, platform and idea and tried to do something very different with uh, republicofit.com. Um, and they did okay for a little while, and that's why they have basically the same start date as Mango Lassi. Uh, but that community eventually uh, failed, um, but we really liked their name, so we ended up uh, purchasing the name um, and our rebranding because uh, we think that they had the better name and we think Mango Lassi had the better platform. And obviously now Mango Lassi has the momentum and the people. Um, and so all this happened within about a week. This is a very, very rapid change. And uh, so Mango Lassi was never planned. It was never an intended uh, thing. It was an emergency measure for people who really valued peer review and professional um, communities and things like that uh, and being able to um, have conversations and, and keeping the conversation protected. And we had no, there was no idea what it was going to happen, right? We didn't know it was going to grow into millions and millions of views per month. We didn't know we would have um, hundreds of thousands of unique users. We didn't, you know, all this was uh, very much a surprise and uh, grew organically over time. Um, there was uh, no, you know, there's no master plan. Uh, it's simply a community that believed from the beginning that we, that community was important and needed to be protected uh, and needed to be open so that everyone had the ability to participate. Um, of course, there is ads, but the ads are uh, purely ad sponsored. They don't give the advertisers uh, special access to the community or anything of that sort. Every vendor, whether you're paid or not, has exactly the same numbers of users, which is unlimited. Um, the actual, the same cost to participate, which is free, uh, the same options within the community. There's, no, there's nothing special to be purchased other than having an ad running on the sidebar or whatever. Uh, so Mango Lassi has been kind of a labor of love. It has never been um, specifically profitable, but it's never had a mission of being profitable. It has remained uh, viable and under no threat uh, for all this time. Um, it has nothing to worry about as it has no need to make profit and does not lose money. So uh, you know, even though it doesn't pay for anyone's salary, it's not intended to, it doesn't have to, right? It's, uh, it's really designed to be something for the community. It's, it's not out there to, to have a mission of its own other than creating the opportunity for the, for the conversation and to, uh, promote IT as a profession to actually, um, enhance the practice of IT. One thing that's very, very important, um, there has been in the past a lot of speculation um, because I was very heavily involved, which I had to be, right? In the same way, everyone thought that I worked for Spiceworks for a number of years. Um, I created or started, I kicked off many of the Spice cores. At one point, I owned about half the Spice cores. Um, the, uh, uh, much of the community was built by Andy Phelps and I, right? We didn't build the platform, but we're the ones who did the conversation and provided the content and, and the promotion and, and made the community happen in, in a lot of ways. A lot of people did, right? It's not a, but that was to a degree that both he and I were assumed to be Spiceworks employees and constantly had a, no, 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 we don't work for Spiceworks. Never have, never got a dollar. That's not how this works. Um, the same things happened with Mango Lassi that because I volunteered on the tech and, and was involved the same from a conversation standpoint, um, it was just assumed by everybody that I was also uh, one of the people who owned uh, Mango Lassi, which was not true at all, no more than it was with Spiceworks. It's same just rumor mills uh, creating those things, uh, which online communities are prone to. What uh, bizarre is that in the case of Mango Lassi, uh, due to uh, a number of odd legal issues over the years, uh, in early 2018, the community ended up being transferred and is now, only since early 2018, a property of NTG, where I work. So I now am involved in the last year, year and a half, uh, with NTG, uh, I'm sorry, I've always been involved with NTG, with Mango Lassi in a sense, uh, whereas I'm actually overseeing the community rather than simply a participant, but in the, um, in the, the grand scheme of the design and the original several years, uh, 
I was not. That was that was all uh, misinformation or r rumors. Uh, but now it is completely true. But it is important. Yes, NTG is an MSP, uh, and so there is a little bit of MSP conflict of interest there. That's not something that can be avoided due to the situation that happened. Uh, but it also provides the protection of uh, NTG believes in the mission of Mango Lassi and protects it and makes sure that there isn't a need uh, for profitability from the community itself. It does have to protect itself against loss, but that's very very easy. Uh, online communities are extremely low cost to operate when done properly, so there's there's no need to have a, a, a big expense around the community. Um, so NTG has a very strong mission, as it always has, to promote IT um, as a field, uh, to protect the other MSPs that are in the community, uh, to make sure that the vendors and everyone have an open marketplace and that no one's being shut out. Uh, and so because of having a sponsor like NTG, who stands in the background, uh, and make sure that happen, it's not the way that we wanted to do it. Uh, we really wanted to have a non-IT company in the background, um, but unfortunately, due to a series of events, that's not how it ended up. But... That was the intention. And that is the history of Mango Lossy. Over the years, there's never been a big event that took Mango Lossy in any new direction. It has simply been the same community all along and has just slowly grown and at times shrunk, uh, but is healthy and full of great people, is welcoming to new uh, folks, we hope that new people come in, and we just feel that at this time there's been so many new people and so many changes outside of Mango Lossy, um, that it is time to kind of go back and give a recap because everyone has forgotten because uh, SpiceWorks backed off on the MSP kickout, um, and there's and because it was never publicly announced, the MSPs were just told that they were going to have to leave uh, because it's not something you would want to have public. Um, it is something that is very easy to forget in the years since that no one wanted to have Mango Lossy. These are all people who were asked to leave SpiceWorks, not people who wanted to leave. Uh, this was not a community that was created because there was some mission or um, because they, they wanted to have an alternative. This was a truly a refugee community for people who didn't have somewhere else to go or were about to have nowhere else to go uh, and that in the years since that information has has often disappeared uh, but there's still that core group who came over in those first days knowing that they they had to go somewhere um, and then many who went to republic of it and came over uh, from there when that community closed so thanks for watching it is a little bit long-winded as most things that i do are uh, but uh, it's it's great at this point to have so many people in the community um, and great to get back to our roots and say, why are we here? What happened? Like, that's an important bit of history. And and it's great to know that we have this really strong mission that isn't going anywhere, right? We're under no threat um, of being purchased. We're under no threat of uh, running out of money. We're under no threat of any of those things, right? We are, we are carefully controlled and, and have no mission um, at profitability ourselves. And so we are here to protect the conversation and make IT a place where uh, uh, the field allows for people to connect in open and free ways and, and uh, discuss ideas, get information, uh, and help each other on a broad basis.